The Senate will come to order. Will the clerk please call the roll? Senators Baisley, Bridges, Buckner. Excused. Coleman, Cutter, Danielson, Exum, Fields, Gardner, Janal, Gonzalez, Hansen, Henriksen, Hakez Lewis, Kirkmeyer, Kolker, Liston, Lundin, Marchman. Senator Marchman. Michelson Janay, Malika. Excused. Senator Malika. Excused. Pelton B. Belton R. Priola. Senator Priola. Thank you, Rich. Roberts. Rodriguez. Simpson. Smallwood. Sullivan. Senator Sullivan. Ben Winkle. Will. Winter. Zenzinger. Mr. President. Here. The morning roll call is 33 present, zero absent, two excused. We do have a quorum. Oh, and look who it is. Please add Senator Buckner to the roll. Senator Kirkmeyer, would you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Happy to. Thank you, Mr. President. Would everyone please stand to join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Approval of the journal. Senator Hendrickson. Thank you, Mr. President. Colleagues, if you turn to page 29 of the journal, the first thing it says is that we were called to order at 9 a.m. <laughs> that is not the proper motion, Senator. Nevertheless, I move that the Senate Journal of January 17th, 2024 be approved as corrected by the Secretary. You have heard the motion. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no? No! The ayes have it, and that motion is adopted. Senate Services. 
correctly printed Senate bills 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, and 59, Senate Joint Resolutions 3 and 4, correctly revised House Joint Resolutions 1003 and 1004. Consideration of resolutions. Members. Members. I blame mostly Senator Marchman, but members, uh, let's please quiet down. Consideration of resolutions. Will the clerk please read the title of Senate Joint Resolution 3? Senate Joint Resolution 3, Senators Gonzalez and Winter, Representatives Furlock and Garcia, concerning the designation of January 22nd as Roe v. Wade Anniversary Day. Senator Gonzalez. Thank you, Mr. President. I request that the resolution be read at length. Will the clerk please read Senate Joint Resolution 3 mm -hmm. at length? Senate Joint Resolution 3 by Senators Gonzalez and Winter and Representatives Froelich and Garcia. Concerning the designation of January 22nd as Roe v. Wade Anniversary Day, whereas on January 22nd, 1973, the Supreme Court of the United States found in Roe v. Wade, 410 U.S. 113, 1973, that the United States Constitution protects the right to abortion, and whereas on June 22nd, 2022, the Supreme Court of the United States overturned the precedent established by Roe v. Wade, 1973, and Planned Parenthood of Southeastern Pennsylvania v. Casey, 505 U.S. 833, 1992, ruling in Dobbs v. Jackson Women's Health Organization, 142, uh, forgive me, so. SCT 2228-2022, that the United States Constitution does not confer a right to abortion and that the authority to regulate abortion is returned to the people and their elected representatives. And whereas Justices Breyer, Sotomayor, and Kagan issued a dissenting opinion in Dobbs stating whatever the exact scope of the coming laws, one result of today's decision is certain the curtailment, curtailment of women's rights and of their status as free and equal citizens, and whereas the surest protection against that curtailment of rights is now offered only by state legislatures and within state constitutions, and whereas upon the Dobbs decision and again on the following anniversary of the 1973 Roe ruling, tens of thousands of Coloradans across the pol political spectrum took to the streets throughout the state to express their disappointment and rage, and whereas overturning Roe has resulted in significant physical and mental trauma too, as well as significant financial burden on people no longer able to access abortion care where they live and who must seek care elsewhere. And whereas marginalized groups have been systematically denied equal access to abortion even before Roe was overturned, especially black, Latin, and indigenous people of color, people with lower incomes and people in remote rural or underserved areas, and whereas on April 4, 2022, to secure the statutory right to abortion free from government interference in the face of the pending Dobbs decision, Governor Polis signed into law House Bill 22-1279, passed by the Colorado General Assembly, titled the Reproductive Health Equity Act, or RHEA. And whereas on April 14, 2023, Governor Polis signed into law the package of three bills, passed by Colorado General Assembly, titled the Safe Access to Protected Health Care Package, or SAPHC Package, which included Senate Bills 23-188, 188-189, and 190, and whereas Senate Bill 23188 codified protection for Colorado's patients, providers, and helpers of abortion and gender affirming care against out of state prosecution, civil lawsuits, investigations, and extradition claims, and whereas Senate Bill 23189 mandated that abortion be a covered service without deductibles, co pays, or co insurance <coughs> under private health insurance plans which protects Coloradans on private plans, but not the hundreds of thousands of Colorados on publicly funded insurance plans, and whereas Senate Bill 23190 categorized the deliberate false advertising of abortion services as a deceptive trade practice, and whereas the right to abortion is still not currently an explicit constitutional right in Colorado and has therefore been challenged 49 times since 2010 in the state legislature, and whereas Colorado voters defeated fetal personhood amendments, which are total abortion bans by 30%, Amendment 67 in 2014, by 41% Amendment 62 in 2010, and by 46% Amendment 48 in 2008. And whereas in 2020, Colorado voters defeated Proposition 115, a 22-week abortion ban by 18%, with more votes cast opposing it than President Biden received on the same ballot, and whereas Amendment 3 of the Colorado Constitution adopted in 1984, by a margin of fewer than 10,000 votes, forbids the use of public funds by state and local government to cover abortion. And whereas while Amendment 3 passed by less than 1% of the vote in 1984 and 2022, exit polling during Colorado's midterm elections found 63% of voter respondents agreed that Colorado's constitution should be amended to protect abortion. 
And whereas polling has consistently shown that a significant majority of Colorado voters support an amendment making abortion a constitutional right and repealing the prohibition on health insurance coverage for abortion, and whereas for the past four decades, as a direct result of Amendment 3, Colorado state and local government employees and Coloradans enrolled in state insurance programs have been denied insurance coverage for abortion for themselves and their families, resulting in discriminatory and harmful effects on those impacted. And whereas Colorado was the first state in the nation to legalize abortion, and Colorado has since led the nation at the ballot box and in the legislature and should continue to lead the nation in protecting abortion access without restriction, and whereas in 2024, Coloradans will be asked to vote on the general election ballot on a constitutional amendment protecting abortion, thus repealing the earlier discriminatory amendment three of the Colorado Constitution from 1984. Now therefore be it resolved by the Senate of the 74th General Assembly by the State of Colorado, the House of Representatives concurring herein, that we the members of the Colorado General Assembly one, recommend voters amend the Con Colorado Constitution to enshrine it in the right to abortion and prohibit Colorado state and local governments from denying or discriminating against the exercise of that right. And two, hereby designate January 22nd of each year as Roe v. Wade Anniversary Day. Senator Winter. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, members. Please feel free to be seated. Um, <clears throat> it is my honor to be one of the co-sponsors of this resolution. Um, just about five minutes ago, we said the Pledge of Allegiance, and we promised, and we promise each other every day to stand up for liberty and justice for all. And I take that promise seriously, and that's why I'm on this resolution, because liberty is about living up to your best life and being able to fill your hopes and dreams. And part of that is being able to make decisions about bodily autonomy. And that's incredibly important. There's 22 other states that have banned abortion. Because of my health condition, should I become pregnant, I would die. It's been made very clear to me. And if I lived in one of those 22 other states, that's taking away my liberty and my freedom. And the justice piece of it is making sure that we have access to abortion care and health care, because it is health care. Just because my lungs and my heart don't work as well doesn't mean it's not healthcare, right? It's about full healthcare and justice and accessing that healthcare. And that's why I'm really proud to live in Colorado because again and again, we've had our voters stand up and say that they believe in the liberty and justice and making sure we have access to healthcare. I have two children, and it breaks my heart that they're growing up in a world with less rights than I grew up with, with less access to health care, with um, worse decisions to be made. And we know that when we have access to health care um, and pregnant Coloradans can live their best and fullest life, it's better for the economy, it's better for our future, it's better for our state. Um, and that's why this resolution is so incredibly important. It's why the actions that Colorado has taken is so incredibly important. And we are independent in the West. We were the first state to, we were the first legislative body in the world to elect women. We were the first state to allow women the right to vote. We were the first state to vote for abortion access on the ballot. We've turned down personhood three times and so I want to thank the voters for continuing to show that independence, believe in liberty and justice, and continue to work with us. And I look forward to continuing to work with voters in the future. Senator Cutter. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I, first of all, want to thank and acknowledge all of the amazing women in this body and in our um, the other chamber who have worked so hard on this resolution and on so many things to protect um, the right to abortion here in Colorado. I am honored to stand up here today um, and acknowledge them. I, I grew up knowing that my rights to bodily autonomy were protected in our Constitution. Before Roe versus, Roe versus Wade, women still got abortions. But many suffered needlessly and died because they were prevented from accessing safe, reliable health care. 
Then in 1967, with a Republican governor, John Love, and a Republican majority legislature, Colorado became the very first state to allow legal abortion. In 1973, the country followed Colorado's lead when the Supreme Court established the constitutional right to abortion in Roe versus Wade. But on June 24th, 2022, in the Dobbs versus Jackson women's health decision, the Supreme Court took away a constitutional right that had been in existence for 50 years. 50 years. Before that, the court had never taken a right away. My daughter and my granddaughter have fewer rights than I did when I started my family. In Colorado, we've worked hard to protect and expand abortion rights, and I'm proud of having been even a small part of helping to make that happen. But all over the country, women's health is jeopardized. Children are being forced to have babies, and politicians are making personal, sometimes life-threatening decisions for women. Men do not tolerate this kind of interference in their personal lives. Studies have shown that unplanned births significantly reduce women's participation in the labor force. Um, and the inability to obtain an abortion undermines career aspirations and achievement. People who are denied an abortion are nearly four times more likely to live below the poverty line. Studies have found that being denied an abortion increases the amount of debt 30 days or more past due by 78%. Being denied an abortion also increases the rate of negative public records, such as bankruptcies and evictions, by 81%. Preventing or limiting safe and easy access to abortion are about power and control. Efforts to control someone else's body are deeply rooted in systems of oppression, misogyny, and systemic racism. We cannot say we expect people to be independent, take personal responsibility, and not help take help or handouts from the state while also removing the ability to make personal decisions, decisions that belong to a woman, her doctor, and her family. I'm so proud to stand in support of this resolution, and I will do everything I possibly can to make sure abortion is once again safe and legal for all women. Senator Beasley. Thank you, Mr. President. So in the uh, Roe versus Wade ruling, the majority opinion delivered by Associate Justice Blackman cited a right to privacy given to pregnant women by way of due process clause in section one of the 14th Amendment. Here's that very wording of the amendment. All persons born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States and of the state wherein they reside. No state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States, nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor deny to any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the laws. Now, the reason you don't see the word privacy anywhere in that section is because Section 1 was written to eliminate the practice of slavery in the privacy of the plantation. So the notion that behavior done in private should be exempt from state laws is a Pandora's box that could apply to the worst of domestic behavior if carried to its logical conclusion. Harry Blackman did not pull the idea of privacy out of sound jurisprudence. Judge Robert Bork wrote about this in his book, um, tempting of America. Unfortunately, quote, the, unfortunately in the entire opinion, Roe versus Wade, there is not one line of explanation, not one sentence that qualifies as legal argument. The second reason that the, this abortion matter is not settled even to this day, thus this conversation, is that it's disquieting to people of good conscience. And to my fellow pro-lifers, I will assert that we need to mature our side of the debate to empathize with the points made by the good senator from Westminster. I believe that the primary reason that settling answers that about abortion are so elusive is that the wrong questions were asked by the Supreme Court in 1973, led by Chief Justice Warren Burger. During the Roe versus Wade hearings, the justices 
posed questions in an attempt to establish conclusions about when life begins in the development of an unborn human. The prosecution provided expert testimony presenting the latest scientific guesswork of the period and all the phases of in utero fetal development were described to the court. And out of that conversation, the notion of trimesters was adopted in the majority opinion. The court reasoned that during the first trimester, the fetus was not to be considered a person. With that understanding, the 14th Amendment wording, nor shall any state deprive any person of life, would not apply. And as the fetus develops, states are allowed to add restrictions on abortions up to the point of birth, but no personhood is assumed until a live birth is complete. Even the Partial Birth Abortion Act of 2003 merely outlaws the procedure, does not attempt to outlaw the destruction of a fetus, fetus which is likely how the law was possible to be upheld by the Supreme Court in 2007. But the mess that will not be resolved began with the assumption by Justice Berger that the Supreme Court had the authority to determine when life begins, that they owned the role of assigning personhood to the fetus at a point in development, and that the Supreme Court justices could endow people with the right to life. The problem is that the Burger Court forgot that the Supreme Court is an instrument of government instituted by the people and derived their just powers from the consent of those people, a branch that government should not even entertain the idea that they are in the position of the creator. So as the founders realized and recorded, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness, and that to secure these rights, Governments are instituted, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. The Supreme Court does not endow us with our rights. They merely secure the rights already endowed to us by our Creator. So when does life begin? Well, it's an interesting question, but it's not the business of government, even those employed by Supreme Court as Supreme Court justices. I urge a no vote on recognizing this blemish on American jurisprudence. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Gonzalez. Thank you, uh, Mr. President, and thank you to the Senator from Woodland Park for your exposition in regards to American jurisprudence. It's a theoretical and philosophical conversation that we often engage in when we are discussing access to reproductive health care, access to abortion. But let's be very clear that now, given the, the US Supreme Court's recent decision overturning Roe v. Wade, we're no longer talking theory. We're now talking about Americans facing prosecution following trying to enact their own decisions about their own bodies. Women in Texas, women in Ohio have faced prosecution and persecution for trying to enact their own, in your words, given by the creator, decisions. This is no longer a theoretical debate that we're having here. As we lament that decision from the US Supreme Court, I am grateful to the folks, the Coloradans, who are enacting not only upon our legacy as being a trailblazer in this state, but who are also blazing new paths forward to ensure that we do everything that we can as a state. We have moved here as a state legislature, and now I look forward to November to see once again Coloradans enshrine the access to abortion care that we know changes lives, transforms lives. And so with that, Mr. President, I thank you. I thank the co my colleagues here uh, in this chamber 
for their consideration of this resolution, and I ask for an I vote. The motion is the adoption of Senate Joint Resolution 3. Are there any no votes? Senators. Van Winkle. I promise I see the rest of your hands. <laughs> just, just one moment as the computer catches up. Baisley, Will, Rich, Gardner, Minority Leader Lundin, Kirkmeyer, Liston, Pelton B. Pelton R. Simpson. Smallwood. Priola. With a vote of 21 ayes, 13 noes, zero absent, one excused, House Joint Resolution, or sorry, Senate Joint Resolution 3 is adopted. <laughs> Co-sponsors. And members, if you, are, if you were on it upon introduction, just a reminder that you're already on it. Danielson. Announcements. Oh, uh, sorry. Will the clerk please add Senator Exum as a co-sponsor? And just one moment before announcements actually. Sign the bills. The president has signed House Joint Resolutions 24, 1001, 1002, 1003, and 1004. Announcements. Senator Zenzi. And Kirk Meyer. Good morning. May I uh, request a moment of personal privilege? Granted. This is kind of an announcement and kind of not, so I just wanted to cover my basis. Um, I hope, uh, colleagues, this morning that you were able to grab some breakfast courtesy of the Colorado Association of Medical Equipment Services, or also known as CAMES, and chat with some of the durable medical equipment providers from across the state. CAMES is here today for their annual day at the Capitol, and we appreciate the opportunity to tell you a little bit more about what CAMES does in Colorado. Senator Kirkmeyer. Thank you, Mr. President. CAMES is an organization made up of small and large medical equipment companies, including oxygen delivery services and supplies, medical supplies, orthotics, prosthetics, wheelchairs, hospital beds, rehabilitation equipment, and many other specialty medical items. They work diligently to keep people out in the community doing what they love and these companies care for the most vulnerable people in our districts. These services keep people at home and not in the hospitals. Senator Zenzinger. 
Thames follows many issues down at the Capitol, but the following are the most important public <coughs> policy issues for this legislative period, both on a state and local level. First, the complicated Medicaid reimbursement authorizations and billing, Medicaid reimbursement deficits, even Medicare pays more, making sure that we have access to quality care for our patients and clients when it comes to durable medical goods, keeping businesses healthy for their employees, balanced regulations, and work for an environment to let business thrive and grow. Senator Kirkmeyer. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, several of our members from CAMES are in the gallery, and I hope that you take the time today to welcome them to the Capitol, get out, meet them. I do hope that you take the opportunity to learn more about the amazing work that they do across our state and in each and every one of our districts. Thank you. Senator Kirkmeyer, I know you're new around here. I didn't oh. either. We just recognize, we can't recognize them either? No. Oh, sorry. Unless you should sorry. pretend like that gallery isn't even there. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, well, they're really not there. Dollar. We'll, uh, we'll go easy on you. And it will be a fine of one dollar. <laughs> Senator Colker. But I, but I paid it, Janet. I paid your fine. Senator Colker. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, members, Senate Finance Committee will be meeting upon adjournment 15 minutes after adjournment in uh, room 357 to hear House Bill 24-1084. Senator Fields. Good morning, Mr. President and colleagues. Members of the Health and Human Services Committee, we will be meeting upon adjournment in the Old State Library 15 minutes after adjournment. Senator Pelton. Thank you, Mr. President. Two days left to donate to the Junior Livestock Sale. Let's beat the house, let's collect more money, let's show them which is the better chamber. So get your money to, to any one of us and we'll get it to the right place, to the chairman of the Ag Committee, and uh, let's beat the house. Senator Pelton. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I've got a check here for $500, so if you guys wanna match me or whatever, this is my money and I was, Come on and let's let's raise more money and and uh, come on and, and let's beat the house. Let's do this and and uh, <laughs> so thank you and thank you for donating so far. Senator Hanson. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Members, I've requested to have an excused absence on January 31st to February the 2nd uh, and ask for your permission to be excused those days. Senator Hanson will be excused those days. Senator Roberts. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the Senate Agriculture and Natural Resources Committee is, is getting to work today. Uh, we are hearing our first bills of the year. Um, so we'll see you at 1.30. We have in room 352, we have Senate Bill 26 and Senate Bill 43. Further announcements? <clears throat> Mr. Majority. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, just want to give you guys a little update. The Office of Le Legislative Legal Services has asked me to remind you about the delivery of bills for Friday's bill introduction deadline. Your finalized bills will be delivered to the front desk for introduction unless you ask legal services to deliver the bill to you instead. If you wish to have the bill delivered directly to you instead of the front desk, you must have that bill completely finalized with your legal services drafter by 5 p.m. today. If the bill is delivered to you, don't forget to turn it into the front desk no later than 4.30 p.m. Friday afternoon. On that, Mr. President, I move that the Senate adjourn until Friday the 19th, 2024 at 9 a.m. You, you have heard the motion. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. And the Senate will adjourn until tomorrow at 9 a.m. <laughs>